OJ invents 2.6 Elixir Golem deck. Mmm, it's an orange juice. What's up everyone, it's OJ. We finally have the Elixir Golem deck. I wanted to come out with this right before the card releases along with the challenge. So hopefully this is helpful in preparing you for the challenge. The Elixir Golem is a three Elixir tank that only targets buildings. His first phase is a large, slow moving tank with 1,408 health and 211 damage. He does have a short range and slow hit speed of two seconds, giving him 105 DPS. He breaks down into two Golemites and that'll have 708 hit points and 105 damage, exactly half the health and damage of the big Golem. Because the two Golemites are smaller, they'll have a medium move speed with a bit of a faster attack speed of 1.5 seconds. This will give each Golemite 70 DPS each for a total of 140 DPS for the Golemites combined. Once he eliminate each Golemite, he'll break down into two Elixir Blobs, which once again have half the health and damage of the Golemites. 352 hit points and 52 damage, having four Blobs with an even faster hit speed of one second, with four Blobs dealing 208 DPS. An Elixir Golem will destroy your Prince's Tower left undefended and then do massive amounts of damage to your King Tower as well. So even though it's three Elixir, you absolutely cannot ignore this. Each phase has 1,408 hit points, which is exactly the same amount of health as a Hog Rider. The total amount of health for all three phases com- Oh, I got a board now. All right, we're, we're, we're in the whole town now. We, we made it. Where was that? Oh, the, the, the total amount of health adds up to 4,224 hit points. This is as much as an eight elixir golem. Sounds a bit overpowered, right? But here's the catch. Once your opponent eliminates each blob, they'll gain one elixir for a total of four elixir. This is kind of the definition of a negative elixir trade, but the point of this strange card is to give it a golem's worth of health for cheap to do as much damage as possible, forcing your opponent to use more elixir to defend. It's really interesting. The more support units can go with yours while their defending is going to be much less of a counter push. Remember, they only get the elixir after the four small blobs are destroyed, giving you plenty of time to do massive amount of damage to both of their towers and the supporting units. The Elixir Golem works similar to the Skeleton Barrel and the Lava Hound where once it's destroyed, units will target the next closest unit as if it doesn't exist for the split second that it kind of splits up. Golemites will tank their own blobs if there's no other support units in the range. Even though the Elixir Golem is super tanky in terms of health, using it as a meat shield on your side of the arena should be used as a last resort because eliminating it early is going to give your opponent Elixir to keep the pressure on. Never ever use it to defend as a meat shield, it's not an ice golem. Using the Elixir Golem to kite into counter push is a deadly combination because the Elixir Golem itself is quite slow and also weak in terms of hit points in the first phase. It can be defended really early with almost any unit without taking any damage from the tower. Once it starts breaking into the second and third phase, that's when it gets way more difficult to contain. Both Inferno Tower and Inferno Dragon will have a difficult time defending all of the blobs because of their charging time and the sheer amount of blobs. And let's face it, the three Elixir Golem isn't coming alone. The best unit to defend the Elixir Golem are projectile splash units like the Executioner or even the Bowler. Try to line up the blobs in one ghost so the axe and the boulder hits them all in one straight line. You gotta angle the bowler just right or you're gonna have a bad time. Pairing splasher units with a tornado will also defend it quite well. Splash Nado always counters beat down. Swarmies do a really good job at stopping the Elixir Golem, especially Skarmy. The Elixir Golem doesn't have any death damage, so Skarmy can take it out with their high DPS, but don't count on them to defend it alone and expect to be zapped or poisoned. In order to defend the Elixir Golem, you'll want to have a building. This will pull the Elixir Golem towards the middle and give them much more time to defend off the Elixir Golem. Without having a building, defending the Elixir Golem without damage is very difficult. Using the Fisherman to pull him towards the King Tower is going to result in massive amounts of damage as well. You could probably pull this off once if you're going to leave your towers to take care of it alone. Using single heavy hitters like the P.E.K.K.A. to defend the Elixir Golem is going to result in more damage on your tower than a faster tank killer like a Lumberjack. The Blobs are just way too fast and tanky for the P.E.K.K.A. to take out in one shot. Splash units are absolutely your best bet to stop the Elixir Golem. You're going to want to create a deck that is good in offense, but even better on defense because of the four Elixir that you're going to give your opponent. They'll have a really big push that you need to manage and defend later on. You basically want to deal more damage on your push with your Elixir Golem than they do when they finish defending it off and go on for the counter attack. If you're going to be using any spells on the Elixir Golem, you'll want to use it on the Blob, since they're the most dangerous in that form. And they have low hit points like Swarmy, so you're gonna get value with your spells. You cannot pull the Elixir Golem towards a King Tower. He's just simply too heavy and slow to be pulled. You're gonna want to wait until they're in the Golemite phase to pull them if you really must. 
One of the best defensive buildings is the bomb tower. This is going to completely stop the Elixir Golem from connecting to your Princess Tower, and it's going to manage the support units behind the Elixir Golem. The log does a great job bringing down the blobs down to 112 health. This is low enough for most units to take out in one shot, and even better if you have a splasher. The Elixir Golem is such a unique card. You can treat it as an Ice Golem on offense to counterattack because of its low Elixir cost, but defending it is as scary as defending a Golem because the Elixir Golem offers so much health for so little Elixir. We found it works really well in Balloon decks, Graveyard decks, even Expo decks, anything that you can kind of counterattack as well. Once again, we want to make decks that you can defend well because the Elixir Blobs give off four Elixir for a massive counter push. In our first impressions video, we replaced the Hog Rider in the 2.6 Hog, but replaced it with the Elixir Golem. This gives the deck a two-prong attack, and you can even tank your Hog using the Elixir Golem. And we all know you can defend almost anything with Musketeer, Skeletons, Cannon, and the Ice Golem. But in this case, the Elixir Golem, but you're not defending with it. The Elixir Golem can replace both small tanks like the Ice Golem and major tanks such as the Giant or even the Golem in most decks. It does kind of even out in terms of Elixir. You just have to ride out that wave and defend theirs even better. Overall, I love this new mechanic. It changed the Elixir counting and puts your opponent on their toes while forcing you to defend a massive wave. Those are some funky interactions that we just showed you guys, but interactions are a little bit different. We've got two different decks that I think will work really well. We've got the Hog Cycle 2.6 deck, but instead of the Hog Cycle deck, we have the Elixir Golem. This can defend against everything. Instead of a cannon, we have Bomb Tower because Elixir Golems are going to be meta, so it's going to defend against it. And then I think this one's going to work insanely well. This is impossible to defend. 3M Elixir Golem. That is nuts. Let's test it out. We're, we're doing Hog Cycle, but taking out the Hog in the Hog Cycle. So we're just playing Hog. So we're just playing Elixir Golem Cycle. Okay, so the idea is I'm going to defend with the Musketeer and Skeletons. I'm going to counterattack with the Elixir Golem. Don't play the Elixir Golem like you would a Hog. This is a completely different archetype. I think it's going to work, but it's going to play completely differently. All right. Okay. My golden rule is that I never sit on Elixir when I'm recording, but it's good to counterattack when you're in a real game. So it is good to usually wait for your opponent. Let's do a Musketeer. We're going to counterattack his Musketeer. Maybe I'm going to cycle my Skeletons if I'm sitting on too much Elixir. Maybe I'm going to just straight up do an Elixir Blob right at the bridge like that. We're just going to cycle through. Okay, we're going to Fireball that. No big deal. Get rid of that Lumberjack. I almost want to put down another Musketeer. The Blobs, they're still doing damage. The Goblin Cage is not completely stopping it. The Goblin Brawler. I'm not scared of the no Goblin Brawl. I didn't even... I shouldn't have done Ice Golem. I forgot he has, he's fast attack. Not very fast move speed. Just fast. All right, so we're going to put an, a Musketeer in the back. And we're doing the Tango again. This time, I'm going to pull with the Skeletons. And then I'm going to stop those bats. And we're going to Fireball that. Oh, perfecto. Perfecto. Perfection! I am perf- Oh, okay. I'm not so perfect. I- We're just gonna do a Musketeer. We're gonna rush against all gut instincts. We're gonna rush. He's gonna be up Elixir. Oh, no. The Barbarian went in. Okay, it splits. 4-3 placement splits. No big deal. My opponent is only OJ. The world's best Clash Royale player. No big deal. I can, I can defeat this. Oh my gosh, OJ. OJ is so good. You can stop that balloon. Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Hog cycle, more like elixir cycle. Musketeer in the back. We're going to counterattack. We're doing tango. This is how we do it. This is how we roll. Musketeer is not quite in front of the ice golem. That was calculated. Why? Because the elixir blob is the tank. Go in. Maybe we're going to log that. We're just going to log that completely. No, none of those shenanigans right now. We're just going to... We're going to spam. Who needs hog cycle when you have three musk... Okay, it's two musketeers now. Elixir golems at full health. 
Holy moly. My musketeers are alive still. That elixir blob still alive. One more hit. Okay. Let's do the musketeer on that side. Can I stop everything? Yes. Yes. We're just going to go for the ice golem. Or the elixir golem. I know I can do fireball, but let's see if he can defend this. We're going all in with the elixir golem. Can he defend the elixir golem, though? More elixir golems. Nope. Connected. One hit. Exactly 102 damage. You cannot stop the elixir golem. Even with the goblin cage. Holy moly. That is a good deck. I have a really good feeling about three musketeers. That's ridiculous. I wasn't feeling this card until now. The, the, these are real interactions and in real decks. Like you can actually interchange them. That was a really good deck. You saw it here first. OJ invents 2.6 elixir golem deck. Potato taught me never, never do 3M until double elixir. Bowler counters Elixir Blob, Elixir Golems, Elixir Golemites, Battle Ram, and kind of Dark Prince. So I'm down a lot of <laughs> Elixir right now. It's not so good. That's all right. I'm going to put down the Golem, the Ice Golems to tank for everything. And I don't feel very confident about that baby dragon there. So we're going to... Oh, OJ with the poison. Really good placement on that poison, OJ. Really good. I'm not playing 3M. Okay, that's the thing. If this was a bandit, this this we replaced bandit with this, by the way. If it was bandit, we would have bridged them. So that was the weird thing. That felt unnatural. I out of all my decks, I I it's either go goblin cage, 3M, or Elixir Golem. Maybe I could have played the Elixir Golem in the back. Who knows? Let's do a Dark Prince on the other side. And I'm going to kind of throw off that bowler. Bada bing, bada bowler. Look at that. What a good bowler. We're going to take it easy, though. I'm going to put the musketeer in the back, and we're not going to do anything too aggressive. Um, I need to cycle to my Dark Prince right now. That graveyard, what is... I hate Splash Nido! Why? It's double elixir now. He's got to defend the Dark Prince and the Musketeers. I'm going to be able to split my 3M. He's got poison, so I'm going to split my 3M on the right side. So he's going to have to poison the right side now. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! I forgot I was facing OJ. World's best Clash Royale player. You know what? Frick this. I ain't got time for this. I'm rushing you. Ice Golem's not tanking. Elixir Blob is not penetrating. Oh my goodness. OJ knew that I had the Elixir Blob 3M deck. Not so shiny now. He's not going to be prepared for the tornado. He didn't do the tornado split. Okay. Don't kill him. No. If I can survive this, if I can survive this, if I can survive... No! Oh, okay. It's over. He had Tornado for that. Dang it! I, I thought this deck was going to be good. Maybe it is good. Maybe OJ's just better. Either way, I'm OJ, and I just won. <laughs> Zero losses. That was really fun. I really like this deck. I really like the mechanics of everything. I really like how the Elixir Golem is cheap, but he's not. You have to really be conscious of when you play him. You can't just spam the Elixir Golem whenever you want. It's a very fancy card, and I thought the 3M deck was going to completely destroy everything, and I thought the Hog Cycle deck was just going to be fun, but it all worked out really, really, really well. So that was really cool to see that in action. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and for the battles, and I hope you guys learned at least something in the video earlier on. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more quality OJ.